everybody! I'm Argelfump! Welcome to the 2020 Nancy Drew Games Hi, Mega Nancy Marathon! Drew. This is my center of operations. My this death. is game number 18, Phantom of, of Venice. Take a look. Sorry, I had to pause to count. I, I can't count that high. I only have 10 fingers. But yes, it's game number 18. And these are all the previous games. They're here in Nancy's notebook. Fantastic. So in this game, Nancy's going to Italy to solve a mystery. The Italian police are just super busy, so they want a random American teenager to solve crimes for them. Thanks to Prudence Rutherford, the wealthy socialite whose necklace I helped recover while solving that scarlet hand case a while back, I'm on my way to Venice, Italy. Apparently, someone there has been dressing up in a mask and cape and stealing valuable pieces of art. The news media call him the Phantom, not only because of the way he dresses, but because he leaves behind so few clues. Ooh. Prudence, who loves Venice and belongs to an organization dedicated to preserving the city's art, is outraged the thief hasn't been caught yet. So she talked someone she knows at the GDIF, the Italian version of our FBI, into having me help the police in their investigation. She arranged for me to stay in Venice in the palazzo she used to own which now belongs to a well-to-do widow named Margarita Foberg. Beyond that, all I know for sure is that I'll be working undercover, and as soon as I arrive, the police will send me something that will lead me to my assignment. What it will be? I have no idea. But am I excited? Oh, see. Yeah, it's so cool. So Nancy's just going to stop uh, a network of criminals operating out of Venice. She's going to be working as a top-secret government agent because Prudence Rutherford has connections. Prudence Rutherford, you might remember her. She was in two previous Nazi Drew games. Um, Secret of the Scarlet Hand and game number 14, Danger by Design. She was a character who talked like this all the time. Obviously, that's the kind of person you need if you want to get in touch with the Italian version of the FBI. <laughs> So, uh, it's interesting, because I'm playing all the Nancy Drew games because everyone's quarantined right now due to the uh, coronavirus. So, in real life, they had to shut down a lot of this stuff in Venice. They had to shut down all the gondolas. And so, it's been a couple of weeks since anybody's um, been using the gondolas in Venice. I heard that there are actually dolphins that were showing up in the, uh, in the canals now. Because there's no boats. The boats have been gone for so long that dolphins have shown up in Venice. That's super cool. And obviously the canals are cleaner because there are no boats there to, uh, to mess up the water. That's probably part of the reason why the dolphins came back. And Nancy will have a handy dandy Italian dictionary. Woohoo! Okay, so I'm going to play... On senior detective mode. I'm live streaming this. Somebody asked, do my kids get embarrassed when they hear me do those voices? I don't do my silly voices in front of the kids. I, I guess I could. <laughs> I, I, I mean, they'll just assume I'm just playing uh, cartoon characters, right? So, like, uh, you know, my one daughter is big on Sesame Street right now, so I have to do the Grover voice all the time. My furry little shadow, it looks a lot like me. And as you know, Grover is the same voice as Prudence Rutherford. You just do it deeper. It, same exact voice, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, here's the start of the game. It's Nancy solving the mystery. Let me out of here. Hey, open the door. Oh no! Well, Nancy, things are not looking good. What the heck happened? This case started out so well. I mean, what could be better than waking up in Venice, Italy? So somebody pointed out, yes, also dolphins are coming out. There's a lot less pollution in Venice in general because people are not leaving their homes. Everybody's staying inside all day. Which is true. I think that, I mean, that's what's happening everywhere. Okay, so what we need to do here is we need to see where all the, um, 
we, we're here in Nancy's room here in Venice. We can pick out an outfit for Let's Nancy see, to wear. What or... I wear? Yeah, I can't do a Yoda voice. I'm sorry. That is my best Yoda impersonation. I'm sorry. I did not watch enough Star Wars as a kid, so I can't do a Yoda voice. I, I, I apologize to everyone. Okay, so let's see. I think we need to meet Margarita. Hello, you must be the American Margarita mentioned. Oh, oh, never mind, Gu guys. Guess what? We're gonna have Tesseray time with Colin. Woo! I'm Colin Baxter. I'm Nancy Drew. What are you doing, if you don't mind my asking? What are you doing, if you don't mind my asking? Right now, I'm restoring this 14th century mosaic, which means, without getting overly technical. I'm cleaning the tesserae that remain in place, repairing those that have been damaged, and replacing those that are missing with new ones custom crafted to match. Okay, so, um, I I'll stop doing the silly voice talk in just a moment, but uh, lots of comments here about Grover and Yoda. Grover and Yoda were both played by the same man, Frank Oz, so that's why their voices kind of sound the same. That's why Miss Piggy also sounds like them, too, if you just mess around with the voices. They sound pretty much the same because they're done by the same person. It's the same person doing different voices. And speaking of people doing different voices, I believe Colin is the same voice as uh, Frank Hardy, right? And the same guy who does um, Shorty from Secret of Shadow Ranch? Um, he, he just does a lot of characters. You kind of lost me at Tesserae. Simply put, tesserae are the individual tiles which comprise a mosaic. Where did you learn how to restore mosaics? Oxford University. That's where I'm from, actually. Oxford, England. At least, that's where I was born. I live here now and intend to do so for a very long while. Although I say that with no small amount of guilt. Why do you feel guilty? People like me and Helena are the reason true Venetians are slowly going extinct. We foreigners come to Venice, fall in love with her, and wind up staying. High demand for food and housing results in high prices, which in many cases means the people who were born here have to leave because they can no longer afford to live here. If I could be granted one wish, it would be to have been born here. That way I would feel entitled to live here. And I would know how to speak Italian. You don't... He also does Miles, the Magnificent Memory Machine! Same voice actor for Miles, too. It's amazing. Yeah, he's a legendary voice actor. Does all these voices. Speak Italian? Much as it shames me to admit it, no. Languages don't come easily to me. And since I am able to do what I do without knowing Italian... You know, I have some slides of various tesserae. Not only are they enormously informative, but they're also quite beautiful. Would you like to see them? Doesn't he also do Bill Kessler in White Wolf of Icicle Creek? And in, uh, he's got two roles in the next game. So he plays the guy who runs the pub in um, Haunting a Castle Malloy. And I believe he plays Johnny Roll in um, Ransom of the Seven Ships. So, uh, he wants us to look at his tesserae? Uh, no way, dude. No, thank you. Oh, I see. You're no more interested in my artistic endeavors than is anyone else around here. I'm just some sort of handyman to all of you, aren't I? Well, far be it from me to take up any more of your time. No, no, I don't think that at all. I just meant maybe I could see your slides later. But if this is a good time for you, I can look at them now. I'd love to, in fact. Really? Really. Marvelous. Here we go. Green may just be my favorite color. Okay, he kind of threw a hissy fit, so Nancy is... Such a delicate hue. Nancy is doing the tesserae just to help his feelings. What a luscious shade of lilac. Mm, that is some luscious lilac. Incredible. Just incredible. Just incredible. Look at it. It's it's blue. Green may just be my favorite color. Oh, oh yes, green. This one takes my breath away. Oh, 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 oh. Now that's what I call violet. That's not what I call violet. That's gray. What, what even is that? Look at that. It couldn't be more perfect. It has a bunch of cracks in it. That's not perfect mm, at all. Looks like it was carved from amethyst. It's not red. That's gray again. Are you colorblind, Colin? Outstanding color. Oh. What a luscious shade of lilac. Again, that's not lilac. That's not lilac. It's awesome. I think I've seen enough, though. I think I've seen enough. 
Very well. I thought I had at long last found a kindred spirit. Someone who shared my passion oh, for beauty. Oh, he's throwing a hissy art, fit again. You apparently are like everyone else. Interested only in what something is worth instead of what it offers the soul. No, no, please. I'd stay, but I really do need to be somewhere. Believe me, I think what you're doing is fascinating. And you obviously really know your stuff. In fact, that figurine in front of you, I've been dying to ask you about it. It's exquisite. What, this statuette? Yes, it is exquisite. It's an example of late Etruscan bronze work. Yes, 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 Amethyst is purple. I am aware of this. I am aware of the fact that Amethyst is purple, I think. Is it Amethyst or Amethyst? <laughs> I always want to pronounce it Amy, but um, I don't know who Amy is. Look, no doubt cast some 2200 years ago. I'm not sure how Margarita came to own it, but she's very fortunate. It's almost impossible to find Bronzetti of this quality outside a museum. You see, after they conquered the Etruscans, the ancient Romans melted down thousands upon thousands of statues like this just so they could make coins. Interesting. Shoot, I wish I had time to hear more. No, 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 no. You go on. We can talk more later. Oh, a parcel was just delivered for you. It's by the door. Thank you. Okay, so a parcel was delivered for Nancy. When he says it's by the door, he means it's not at all by the door. <laughs> Ow! Shoot, I'm sorry. Here, I'll get those. Okay, so this is Helena Berg, my roommate. She's writing a message to Hildegard Killian. You must be my newly arrived roommate. I'm Helena Berg. And I'm Nancy Drew. Sorry for all the commotion when I came in last night. My plane got in three hours late. No need to worry about waking me up. I can sleep through almost anything. Well, I'm sure you have things to do and places to go, so I won't keep you. Oh, by the way, there's a parcel for you in the entryway. Ciao. A parcel by the entryway. So, it's actually here. I guess this is the entryway, right? Miss Nancy Drew, you need to use your card. So I need to use my bank card at the Piazza San Marco. Apparently that's the only bank that's here in Venice. And the Phantom just stole the Chalice of St. Gervais! Oh no. That Phantom always stealing stuff. Okay, so, um... I'm here. You can see where I am. It's, it's blue. I need to walk around until I can reach the, pla the Piazza San Marco. Not Plaza. Piazza. It is kind of a plaza. And I want to get some bird seed. Sweet bird seed. I also want to buy some sunglasses at some point. Ooh, there's a book. That's just, We've got books everywhere. You can kind of hear people talking in the background. Doesn't look like I can buy sunglasses here yet, so I will buy sunglasses later. Here's my bank card. Welcome, Nancy Drew. Oh, this is so cool. Your instructions. You are near the Argon Building. It's the Argon Building. That's where Antonio Fongo works. He is totally a criminal. We need you to spy on him. Here's your spy gear. Binoculars and a pager. Whenever your pager beeps, that's when you can, uh, I, I mean, that's when she needs to spy on Fongo, when the pager beeps. Ciao, this is Nancy Drew. Yes, is this Detective Leporace? Si, but please, to you I am just Sophia. I'll remember that, Sophia. Why do you call? Can I be watching Fongo? He's not in his office. I know, I just wanted to make sure this PDA thing works. It is from the GDAF. Military equipment is good. But you are smart to test it, Nancy. And you are good to help us. We are very short-handed. Carnevale keeps the police very busy. I just hope I can help. Remember, when you have seen Fongo do something of interest, call me. Ciao. Excellent, excellent. So, we just need to wait for Fongo to do something interesting. This could be difficult, because he's a boring fellow. <laughs> I'm just joking, but he does stay inside most of the day. Maybe he's just practicing his social distancing. Just trying to stay away from everybody, hope 
hope nobody gets sick. Uh, 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 I don't need to see the case file. I was trying to pull out the Italian dictionary to show off this. So, Sonatrico is actually Dreamtronics. Antonio Fongo is the owner. Looks like I'm going to have to pick this lock somehow. And I need to find a way to pick the lock. Woohoo! Ah, uh, Fongo looks like a pigeon. Maybe that's why nobody hangs out with him. They just call him <gasps> Pigeon Man. Antonio Fongo is in his office. Time to go to work. We'll find Pigeon Man right here. Okay, so he's in his office. I need to go to the, the rooftop and spy on him. Uh, when I do, um, Margarita's going to bother me. Nancy, you are up. Come talk to me. Buongiorno. And again, welcome to Carnas Costa. I see you finally decided to get up. I thought you were still asleep. I was starting to think you were still in bed. If it's a daytime and it's sunny, no matter the time of year, this is where you will find me. They say the sun gives you wrinkles and worse. And that may be true, but it also makes you tan. To me, to be tiny is good. Your accommodations, they are to your liking? They're fantastic. Oh yes, the room is wonderful. You do not mind having a roommate? Uh, well, she's fine. Well, sort of, but at least she doesn't snore. I warned Prudence that you would have to share a room, but she said you had to come to Venezia this week and you had to stay here. And as we both know, what Prudence wants, Prudence gets. Have you gone outside the car yet? Yeah, Nancy is not doing good social distancing. Nancy needs to be six feet away from uh, Margarita. I think in general, I would try to stay six feet away from Margarita. She's rather rude. Yes, in fact, I have. Just do not forget to take your key and lock the front door whenever you leave. This is not the Palazzo Grassi, but I do have uh, several valuable pieces of art. And with Il Fantasma, this phantom thief running around and stealing everything, I prefer not to take any chances. I sure hope Margarita is wearing sunscreen. I, I don't think she is, though. I, I don't think she is. I met the guy who's restoring the big mosaic in the main room. He's pretty intense. Colin Baxter? Uh, I do not know how any man can find happiness looking at pieces of painted rock all day. Talking to him, it's like taking a sleeping pill. Que barba. But they say he is good, and so he works for me. How much do you know about him? Not much, but... Olivia von Helstein raved about the work he did for her. And what is good enough for the Countess of Schlosselbeck is more than good enough for me. Oh, yeah, I I'm not better than the Countess of Schlosselbeck. Definitely not better than her. How long have you lived here? Almost two years. Two wonderful but very expensive years. The city expects homeowners like me to maintain these old buildings. But who pays for everything? We do. The Restoration Council gives us nothing, not one single euro. It is criminal. You mean you can't afford it? You miss the point. Just because I can afford to pay does not mean I should. It is the... Uh, principle. It is the principle of the thing. Besides, being rich is something I like. If I am all the time spending money, I will soon be unrich. I'll let you get back to your sunbathing. Good, good. And Nancy, that blouse you are wearing, you should change it. My blouse is fantastic, lady. Arr. So I'm surprised she gets invited to any parties, to be honest. It seems like she spends all of her time up here just doing nothing all day. It's hard to imagine she's running out of money. How much money does she spend? Uh, please, do not read that. I don't think she has a kitchen, though. She probably orders out to eat every single day. Yeah, that, that would be expensive. Okay, so... I'm too far away to see anything. Spy time. Use my spy glasses here. They're called binoculars, but I'll call them spy glasses, because that sounds cooler. Nancy, what are you doing? Oh, which one should I pick? Should I say I'm bird watching? Should I say I'm spying? Or should I say, oh, I'm uh, just studying the architecture? 
uh, about 10 or 15 minutes from now, we'll hear uh, a conversation where Margarita repeats what Nancy says here. So it's not just a random choice you make. There's actually a smaller conversation later on about it. Yeah, Nancy has wonderful fashion. I don't even know what Nancy's fashion is. Um, uh, Nancy's just wearing her default outfit. Okay, we have a vote for studying the architecture, a vote for spying, and a vote for bird watching. So <laughs> the first three votes were all for something different. Architecture, 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 bird watching, bird watching, spy, 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 architecture, studying, studying. Oh my gosh. Okay, I think spying wins. Spying on someone? Davvero? <laughs> it is either spying or architecture. And now we just get to watch Fongo in his office drinking coffee. <laughs> and now I'm, I'm getting a hundred votes for like bird watching now. Oh dear. This looks interesting. So here's the bird. He got a secret message from a bird. Oh my. I'd better go somewhere private and call Sophia. He removed something from the pigeon's leg. You are positive? Yes, he removed something, kind of studied it, then left the office. Maybe he is using a trained pigeon to communicate with someone. Yes, this could be true, because we know that by phone he talks to almost no one. Here is what we will do. I will deliver to you a tracking device. You will sneak into Fango's office when he is not there and feed it to the pigeon. After that, you can use your PDA to see in what direction it has flown. You want me to feed a tracking device to a pigeon? Yeah. It will be very, very tiny. But I do not want to leave it at the ATM. If you go there too much, people will get suspicious. So we will leave it for you in the costume store in Campo Santa Maria Famosa. It will be hidden among the things there. You will have to find it. How will I know what it looks like? Very soon, I will send a picture of it to your PDA. But you Ooh. must locate the device quickly. If you do not find it in time, it will destroy itself. If that happens, we will hide another device. Your PDA will show you where we have hidden it. You want me to feed a tracking device that self-destructs to a pigeon? The self-destruct mechanism will automatically deactivate when you pick it up. And do not worry. The device will not hurt the pigeon after it is swallowed. Well, then I guess I'm on my way to Campo Santa Maria Formosa. After you have fed the tracking device to the pigeon, you must do two things. You must find out where the pigeon goes when it leaves Fongos, and you must discover what it is carrying. Call me when you know these things. Ciao. Yeah, Nancy gets a phone call. Give me a second, though. I want to uh, get some bobby pins. Now that I know I need to break in the fongos, I can grab the bobby pins. And get myself a new outfit as well. Might as well. Let's see. I'll wear this. Margarita hated my blouse, so I'm putting on this instead. Ooh, ooh, yes. Around the neck and this belt. Uh, uh, I guess I can't wear a scarf and a belt at the same time. And yellow sunglasses. Beautiful. Okay. Okay, who's calling? Hello? Hello, is this Nancy? Miss Rutherford, yes, it's Nancy. How are you? But to be honest, I'm rather peeved. Were you or were you not to call me just as soon as you were settled in there at the car? I'm sorry, I should have called. But I've been very busy. And I've been very worried. I was afraid Margarita had allowed my beloved Carnus Ghost to fall into such a state of disrepair that it was no longer habitable. Oh, no, no. The car is fine. Oh, that's a relief. So, how goes the case? Captain Rassica said he was going to send you a parcel. Has it arrived? Yes, it sure has. Good. The sooner you get to work, the better. I talked you up quite a bit, you know. Both the GDIF and the local gendarmerie are expecting great things from you. As am I. No one wants this phantom scoundrel captured more than I do. I'm flattered, Miss Rutherford, and I'll do my best. But it's not like I'm a superhero or anything. Like I told you, I just like solving mysteries. Just see the 
that you solve this one in a timely fashion, dear. We leave on a cruise in two weeks, and I shan't be able to enjoy a second of it until I know all those stolen works of art have been recovered. I'll let you get back to whatever it is you're doing. As it happens, I'm writing my memoirs. They shall be called The Principles of Prudence. Unfortunately, this has necessitated my hiring an assistant. You really must stop thinking bad thoughts about Ginger. Yes, you are. Just look how she's shaking. The other day, poor Ginger mistook the shapeless lump of leather my assistant called her first for a doggy toy and ripped it to shreds. She's still a bit perturbed. Although, believe you me, Ginger did her a massive favor. Anyway, if you ever cannot reach me, it means we are hard at work. The bun chance. Oh, I can't believe she hired an assistant with such bad fashion sense. That purse. <laughs> and these are those canals in Venice. Hello, Nancy. Hey, Colin. I should be running along. What's his name? What's whose name? The bloke who gave you that locket you're wearing. Oh, Ned. G goodbye, Nancy. <laughs> Wait, a handsome man gave you a present? Goodbye, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Hmm. Hello, Nancy, right? So, how do you like Venice? It's all right. You'll think differently once you've been here a couple of days. I think Venice is the most fascinating city in the world. Its history, its art, its layout. Everything about it is so rich and so beautiful and says so much about human ingenuity. I absolutely love it. Where are you from? I was born in Austria, but I'm from all over, really. England, France, Germany. And someday, Venice will be my home. Every time I come here, I make an effort to meet new people. Having friends is very important to me, you see? But I don't want to move here until I can afford my own palazzo. So, until that day, I shall have to content myself with staying here wherever I can and as often as I can. What do you do for a living? I'm a journalist. Right now, I live in Hamburg because that's where the offices of your event magazine are. I do most of my writing for them. But I know far more about Venice than I do about Hamburg. In fact, I know more about Venice than most Venetians do. I know where the best souvenir stands are, the nicest glass shops. Yeah, I'll make you a list of the cheapest cafes. No, no, that's okay. You don't need to do that. You don't want to know where the cheapest cafes are? Are you sure you're American? I'm just not into touristy things, that's all. I see. Oh, but you could tell me what your very favorite spot in Venice is. I'd love to know that. Well, let me think. That would have to be Campo San Paolo. There's something, I don't know, something very avant-garde about it that's quite charming. Do you talk to Colin Baxter very much? I try to talk to him, but he's so focused on his work. Having a decent conversation with him is virtually impossible. Once, out of politeness, I feigned an interest in what he was doing, and the next thing I knew... He was showing you his test ray slides. Yes! They went on and on and on. It was nightmarish. I felt like a seabird that had landed in an oil slick and couldn't fly away. The only way I could escape was to confess that I found the slides less than fascinating. Which hurt his feelings terribly, I'm afraid. But it couldn't be helped. Yeah, same thing happened to me. So Colin's just crazy about Tesserae and shows them off to everyone he can. Yeah, the same thing happened to me. The man is obsessed, which is a shame, really. After all, he's not bad-looking, and there's a touch of intrigue about him. What do you mean? Once, while he was working, his cell phone rang. He immediately left the room to take the call, but as he was leaving, he picked up by saying, This is Justin, not Colin. Justin. Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun! He's using a fake name? Either Justin or Colin. One of them's fake. I'll leave you to your writing. It's been a pleasure. Pretty look it. Thank you. My boyfriend gave it to me. Boyfriend? You do have it all, don't you, Nancy Drew? Yeah, and I'm a spy. My life is amazing. Yeah, and we're gossiping about Colin right in front of him. I don't think he can hear us. He's too focused on the those tesserae. 
Let's see, Margarita's... No, 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 no. Uh, Helena's favorite spot was here. The, uh... The Campo San Paolo. If you're here for the dance audition, take a look at the dance instruction book. When you think you're ready, put the cat suit on and get on stage. Let's do this, everyone. We're gonna start dancing. If you're good enough, you can keep the suit and come by anytime you want and dance some tips. Oh, and... If you're not here for the addition, beat it. When the music starts, you start. Do, 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 do. Dancing in a cat suit. Woo! Clapping. Okay. Okay. That's the bell. Good. You go, go. Not bad. Wonderful! You just want to click on the correct things at the right time. Nice! So like red, that's the alarm. And that's you the whistle there. Go. That's blue. Buzzer. Bravissima. Purple laser things. And then hand clapping, correct? You go, go! Some rough edges though, so take that costume home and practice. What's your name? Uh Nancy? Nancy? Forget it. From now on your name's uh Punchy. Punchy LaRue. But next Yep, so now Nancy has a cat suit that she can dance in. I guess she can't change here. Can can she I guess she has to go home to change it to her cat suit. Right? I can't just click here and then change her clothes. Nope. Okay, you have to go home and change into the cat suit if I you want to dance. I can't dance without my costume. Okay, so let's see. We're going to the Campa Santa Maria Formosa. That's where the pellet is going to be. See the pigeon bug. It's going to look like that. It's going to be some here in uh, somewhere here in Vera's costumes. Right here, in fact. Got it. So let's see. I need to get a red dress, white gloves, and a blonde wig. Yep. Yep, I think that's everything here. Let's go back inside here. Oh, what's this? Oh, hey, it's cool. It's a- OW! Clobbered. So I got a concussion here. Oh my, oh my. Yeah, what is what is Ned gonna say? What are Nancy's family members gonna say when they see she's she brought a cat suit home from Italy? It was part of a case, Dad. I needed to dance on stage. Why? Mystery, Dad. Mystery. Okay, so now the, now the cat suit should be here in Nancy's area, along with this dress. That hat looks terrible. Yeah, that wig. Yeah, I like it. Okay. Let's put on this cat mask. Beautiful. I like the belt. I like the belt. I like the belt. Yeah. Great. Okay, hold on a second. Aha! What's this? Nancy. Thought you might enjoy these. They're from a shop. Colin. Look at this sausage. Does that look yummy or does it look disgusting? 
Answer, it kind of looks disgusting. Ooh, well, that doesn't look as bad. Hmm, interesting flavor. Ooh. Oh, my stomach. Yeah, that looks disgusting. Ooh, I'm not feeling so good. Nancy? Are you alright? Oh my gosh! You're positively green! Nancy? Ugh. Oh, I should so not have eaten those sausages. So Nancy got poisoned by the sausages. Doesn't look like it was terrible poisoning, maybe just a little bit of food poisoning that hurt her stomach. Probably is gonna hurt her stomach for a couple of days now. Nancy, I've been worried about you. How are you feeling? A little angry, actually. Those sausages you left in my room gave me food poisoning. What? what sausages? I didn't leave sausages in your room. The note they came with said they were from you. Well, someone else must have written it and signed my name, because I promise you, I did not leave any sausages or any note in your room. Besides, you don't think someone would give you tainted sausages on purpose, do you? They might have. Why would someone try to poison you? You're right. It was probably just an accident. Of course it was. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know I'm a spy yet. Do you live here at the car? No, I have a room in a building on the other side of the Grand Canal. A very small room. But I spend so much time here and so little time there, I suppose technically I do live here. I should be running along. That is a wig you're wearing, right? Oh, yes, it is. Good, because there's nothing wrong with your real hair. Nothing at all. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you indeed. He likes my hair. I believe we have a mini mystery trying to determine handwriting. Hmm. Yeah, Helena's handwriting totally doesn't match with, uh, does not even kind of match with the note on those sausages. So Helena couldn't have written that. Hmm. Then who could have? So, I was going to break into Fongo's apartment. That's what I was doing. Let's get back to that. Use a bobby pin here. I believe what we want to do is make all the keys line up uh, on this one. They're not keys. What's the official word for this thing? Eh. I'm totally forgetting now. Uh, it's the key parts. And there we go. Opened it. Great. Got it. So, another top secret pigeon. Pigeon message. So, we're going to give it the tracking device inside its food. That way we'll know where that secret pigeon is going. Secret agent pigeon. Tumblers, tumblers, that's right, lock tumblers. That's the word for those things that we were turning. Oh my gosh, Fongo's coming back! Oh no! Okay, Fongo's coming back to his office. Nancy needs to hide. That pigeon's pretty cool. It's my friend. Ah, he's standing right here. Vieni, vieni qui, piccioncino. Vieni, vieni. Vola, vola. Wait, what's this? So this is a, a poster of all the people that are in the gang. And there's Il Dottore, or Capitano. I think Capitano is the important one here, because that's the password for his computer. Capitano. So he plays chess sometimes with Gina. And all these trash messages. I wonder what this says in English. Please allow us to make a dream vacation for you. 
He was ready to leave for Tahiti. Ready to leave for Aruba. Mm. He, he basically has a standing reservation for uh, other other countries, in case he needs to leave the in, in case he needs to leave the country soon. That's what I think that story is. I think even here, yeah, here we have more of these. Look at all these islands he's planning to go to. Tahiti, the Virgin Islands, Bermuda, Aruba, Seychelles. Let's see, he's got random things here. Ah! Weird. A scope like cards are missing. Scopa cards. He's got scopa cards. He's got a robot. And he's also got a stuffed kitty. I don't know why he has one of those, but he does. He does. Okay, so the pigeon is down and to the left. So let's see, I'm here. Down and to the left is here. And the pigeon with the tracking device is somewhere here. That's not the one. Wrong bird. Wow, this is really tough. Okay, this one? Gotcha! Aha! Hello? What kind of message is that? I'd better call Sophia. Nancy, you have tracked the pigeon. After it left Bongos, it flew to Campo Santa Margarita. It landed right next to this place called Casa de Giochi. Casa de Giochi? You are sure? Yeah. Is something wrong? Casa de Giochi is a private club owned by Enrico Tazza. The police suspect that he fences stolen goods for big criminals like Leo Macchiano. If Fongo is working for the Phantom, perhaps Tazza is working for him too. Look around the Casa de Giochi, Nancy. Talk to Tazza if you can. Get on his good side. See how much you can find out without making him suspicious. Was the pigeon carrying a message? Yes, but all it says is hello in English, followed by an exclamation point. Hmm. There is a dot at the bottom of this exclamation point? Yeah? You must find a microscope and examine this dot, Nancy. If Fongo was sending a message to Tatsa, maybe it's hidden there. A microdot, of course. I'll do that. I'll find a microscope and take a look at it. If I do not hear from you, you will hear from me. Yep. House... House of Games, I believe it's called. Yep, House of Games. Casa de Giochi. So we just run through his trash. And what's this? Colin Baxter is really Justin Beaumont. A criminal. A criminal who stole paintings from private collections. And what's this? Ahem! Dear Signor Tazza, we have a top secret criminal spy who's showing up. Her name is Samantha Quick. She'll be wearing a red dress, white gloves, black sunglasses, and blonde hair. Kind of amazingly, Leaf. They leave that important information just here in their trash Looks where like anybody it. could find it. Yeah. So we need the propane, the propano. That's propane, correct? So, uh, the sunglasses. I believe we're back at the, the Plaza San Marco. Here they are. Woo! Oh, Fongo's doing stuff. That's my pager. Gotta go spy on Fongo again. So yes, this is the same Samantha Quick who will appear in Nancy Drew, the silent spy. 
Makes sense that Nancy sees the evil spy Samantha quick again Another in package? the spy game. Whoa! A gift for Ildatore. Ildatore. One of the criminals in Fongo's ring. Yikes, they're talking about me. I shouldn't listen. She doesn't bother me, nor me. In fact, I rather like her. But I'm going to anyway. This is because she spends most of her time on the roof bothering me. She is always up there looking through binoculars. She says she is a spying on someone. A teenage girl spying on someone. That is what she said. Come now, Margarita. She was giving your leg a good tug, that's all. This could be. Anyway, I apologize for the trouble she made. If she bothers you, you tell me and I will tell her. Oh, she's fine. She's quite fine, actually. If you change your mind, you know where to find me. Fantastic. So let's see. I believe I need to go to Nancy's room here. Just so I can put on sunglasses. Because I can't put on sunglasses, obviously, by myself. I have to go back to my room to change thoroughly to get sunglasses on. And voila! I've got a Samantha Quick disguise. Nice. Let's see. Yes, uh, Simone Mueller uh, mentioned Samantha Quick in game number five, the final scene. She said that could be a cool nickname for Nancy if Nancy decides to become an awesome celebrity. Hello, Nancy. Do you know who that box of chocolates in the entryway is for? No, I didn't really look at it because I assumed it was for you. It's not? No, it's for someone named Il Dottore. Oh, I was afraid, I mean, I assumed they were from that locket fellow of yours. Il Dottore, wonder who that could be. Does Margarita know that you went to prison in England for art theft? What? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Just out of nowhere, Nancy's like, hey, guess what? I know you're a criminal. You wouldn't lie to me, would you, Colin? My real name is Justin Beaumont. Two years ago, I removed a Renoir from the private collection of a man to whom it was nothing more than a financial investment. I took it home so it would be appreciated as the masterpiece it was. Its former owner took issue with my actions, I was arrested, and I was sent to prison for a year. As for Margarita, she's the only one who knows. She says if I don't continue to work for her for next to nothing, she'll tell all her friends I have a criminal record, which would essentially end my career here in Venice, just like it ended my career back in England. If that were to happen, I'd be utterly lost. How did Margarita find out? I have no idea. She wouldn't tell me. What's worse, not a Maybe she found out because she was digging through a criminal's trash. That's how I found out. Not only does she keep trying to get me to use substandard material so she can save money on the renovations I'm doing for her, but she wants me to cover it up by lying to the Restoration Council about it. And for someone in my precarious position, <sighs> let's just say resisting has been very, very difficult. Enough. I insist we change the subject. Would it be okay if I used your microscope? I have a very strict policy when it comes to my equipment. No one touches it but me. And now, you. I trust you, Nancy. Please, be my guest. Oh, thank you. Aw, he trusts me. I don't know why, I just proved he was a bad guy, but whatever. So, the Microdot... Ha! Ildatore requests that you change the safe room lock combination to 43556. We'll be doing that much later on in the game. Much later on, sort of at the very end. And what's this? Hmm. Her handwriting doesn't match either. Stella, thank you so much for inviting me to your party last week. What a grand event. It was an honor to have been seated next to Count Wurzberger. Although his breath was quite fragrant and took some getting used to, I'm sure you were unaware of his unfortunate problem when you made the seating assignments. I look forward to seeing you at the reception for the Fredonian Ambassador. Very truly yours, haha, <laughs> Margarita Foberg. 
I think I think Stella put her next to the smelly guy on purpose to try to get rid of her. Where is she? Where is Margarita? I thought she never left. Hmm. Oh, whatever. Let's just spy on Fongo. This looks interesting. Ah, another message, huh? Good to know, good to know. Let's see, is Colin still here? Colin slash Justin. Good, he's gone. So we can spy on his handwriting. It should be... Well, that's not his handwriting. That's his tesserae puzzle. Religious relics of Venice. Property of Colin Baxter. The handwriting on this envelope is the same as the handwriting on the note that came with the sausages. Which means Colin sent them. Dun, 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 dun. And he was looking up on the chalice of St. Gervais. Gervais? Gervi? He, he was reading up on it moments before it was stolen. Quite a coincidence, I would say. And let's get an Easter egg. You get an Easter egg by breaking into Margarita's room. I assume this is Margarita's room, right? I guess it could be the bathroom, although it'd be really mean of her to keep the bathroom locked every time. I still can't get inside, but yes, that gives me an Easter egg. Ha 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 So Colin's not only a liar. Oh, oh. Hello? Nancy, I do not hear from you. Have you examined the micro dot the pigeon was carrying? Yes, I have. Sorry, I should have called. Anyway, the message, which was written in English, said Il Dottore requests you to change the safe room lock combination to 43556. Il Dottore? Yes, which is really interesting because in his office, Fongo has a poster of Commedia dell'arte masks. He's crossed out all but five of the masks, and among the ones that aren't crossed out are the Brigella mask. The mask the Phantom wears. Right, and the mask for Il Dottore wasn't crossed out either. And it was in the middle, like it was more important than the others. And when I went back to the place where I'm staying, a box of chocolates had just been delivered for someone named Il Dottore, which means it's very possible that Il Dottore is one of the people at the Canos Costa. Perhaps Fango and the Phantom and whoever else they are working with are going by the names of Commedia dell'arte characters. This would make it easier to secretly communicate with each other. And is that true? Perhaps those chocolates are a message of some kind. And this Il Dottore was at the center of that poster you saw Perhaps the person the message was meant for is the ringleader. Just what I was thinking. Here is what we will do. I will have a technician hide tracking devices and objects these people are likely to carry around with them. Then, when we know which of them is Il Dottore, we will activate the appropriate device and be able to follow him. Awesome! Let's see, Helena's always writing, so for her I could plant a bug in her pen maybe. And Margarita is always sunning herself. So you could hide a bug for her in a sunglasses case. But for Colin? For Colin, you could bug a mosaic tile. You know, a tessera? He's likely to carry a mosaic tile on his person? If it's from me, he will. <laughs> Long story. This is good information, Nancy. I will have our technician prepare the two bugged objects and the device which she will hide in the pen, then leave them for you in the Banca del Oro ATM. You should give them to each person as soon as you get them. Will do. Keep your finger. Uh oh. It's crossed. My fingers are always crossed. Sorry about that. Game paused for a couple of seconds there. Okay, so uh, let's let's do the mission that we just got. I'm gonna do my spy mission now. Nancy needs to deliver stuff to these various characters. 
Eh, hey, avete visto qualche, su, in televisione quello che è successo a proposito del fantasma? No, cosa è successo? No, è successo. Un poliziotto l'ha visto e mentre lo stava cadendo, il catturato è diventato acqua. Si è sciolto, sciolto come il sole. E dove è andato? Great. Okay, so one of the three people staying at the Canas Costa is the culprit. That's basically what we've confirmed. And uh, we need to figure out which one of them is in fact the culprit. So I'm gonna spy on them. Let's give everybody their spy devices. I think we just need to talk to them. Hello, Nancy. What's wrong? The person who left me those bad sausages. It was you after all. No, it wasn't. I told you before. The I... handwriting on the note they came with matches the note I found in that book on religious relics. The one that belongs to you. All right, yes, it was me. But I had no idea those sausages were tainted. I just thought you might like them. I tried to lie my way out of it because I... I couldn't bear for you to know that I made such a ghastly mistake. But before you write me off as a feckless liar and an utter fool, just know that I am truly sorry. Causing you to be miserable was absolutely the last thing I wanted to do. Well, I'm fine now, and everyone makes mistakes, so apology accepted. But I'm still kind of mad that you lied to me. I don't blame you one iota, but I'll make it up to you. I don't know how yet, but I will. I promise. I came across this tessera and thought you might like it. It's quite beautiful. All the more because it came from you. Thank you, Nancy. I shall treasure it. While I was looking through your book on religious relics, I noticed you made an appointment to see that chalice the Phantom just stole. The chalice of St. Gervase? That's right, I did. As a mosaicist, I'm always interested in seeing how stones and jewels are inlaid in metal, so I arranged to see it outside its case. Magnificent piece of work. My timing was magnificent as well. Two nights later, it was stolen. How's that for coincidence? I need to get going. Come back any time. It's nice that he apologized. Still, you know, it's not so nice that he lied to us in the first place. So this is uh, 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 Selena's notes. We can't read them because they're in German. And I don't have the German dictionary. I did not purchase one from the stand. Oh well. Okay, so we put a bug inside her pen. And now we're going to give Margarita some Hello sunglasses. Again. You always wear that locket. I've only had it a week. My boyfriend gave it to me just before I left. I should have known. That explains why it is so... Uh... Ordinary, which is not a bad thing. It is just that, uh, well, when one lives in Venezia, one becomes so used to true beauty that anything less tends to stand out like uh, dirt on a white rug. I saw this case and thought you might like it to keep your sunglasses in. You are giving me a gift? You do not have to do this, Nancy, but I, I like gifts. And this one, it is very nice. Grazie. My roommate, Helena Berg, does she stay here a lot? This is the first time. I met her at a party which Rosetta del Bene gave. When Helena found out where I lived, she practically begged me to let her stay here. And with Rosetta standing right there, well, I could not say no. Why was she so insistent about staying here? She said it was because the Naz Costa is so centrally located. Which it is. Altro che. But I think it was because I am so centrally located. She is what you call a social climber. Always asking me about parties. When they are, where they are, who is invited, what should she wear, whose name should she say to get in. Che schifo! The upper class of Venezia is close to outsiders. Elena is full of volio, this is true, but she will never be one of them. Us. I hear you've been using the fact that Colin has a criminal record to try to get him to do things that may not be totally legal. Who tells you this? Colin, he says that? Because I do no such thing. It is him. He is the one who wants to break the law. Margarita, he says, pay me a thousand euros. 
and I will find a way to save you 10,000 euros on your renovation. No, I tell him, the sham mostare. But he keeps bringing it up. Uh-oh. How did you find out he had a record? He told me. When he asked me if I wanted him to lie to the council, he was trying to prove he had experience in such things and could get away with it. And now, he is telling you that cheating on the renovations was my idea? Oh, once a liar and a thief, always a liar and a thief. This is what I get for being nice. If and when people find out I hired such a man, I will be the laughingstock of Venezia. So, please, Nancy. Uh, please. Keep what you know to yourself. Okay. I'll let you get back to your sunbathing. Bella Roba. Margarita's just really mean. Just mean all the time. Okay. So, now let's impersonate... Master Spy slash International Criminal Samantha Quick. So right here at the Campo Santo Santa Margarita. Not named after the Margarita on the roof. No, 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 no. She does not have a house named after her. What is your name? Samantha Quick. You are early, but please, come in. Enrico is at the Scopa table. Ah, sono Enrico Tazza. Benvenuta a Venezia. I'm sorry, but if it's all right with you, I'd prefer to speak English. Of course, whatever you wish. What a pleasant surprise. I wasn't expecting you until after Carnevale. Is that a problem? Oh, of course not. The sooner you get to work, the sooner you, we, will be compensated. So, you're not only young and attractive, but enthusiastic as well. Tell me more about yourself, Samantha. I don't think he notices that Nancy's wearing a wig. Well, I'm from the States, as you can tell. And I'm going to school in Switzerland. And now I'm here. And I think that's all that matters, don't you? Because, frankly, telling my life story to someone wearing a mask is just a little too freaky for me. I understand. Besides, having never met you before, I would have no way of knowing if what you tell me is a lie or the truth. I always wear the same costume for Carnevale. Why? Because I'm a very superstitious man. I believe that always doing things a certain way brings good fortune. For instance, I never discuss business with anyone unless and until that person beats me at the game of Scopa. Are you familiar with the game? Never heard of it. It's a card game, very popular in Venice. We play it with the traditional Italian deck of 40 cards. There are four suits in a Scopa deck. Coins, cups, swords, and clubs. Each suit has ten cards. Seven, the most valuable card. Six, five, four, three, two, and ace. There are also three face cards. Valet, knight, king. When you are taking tricks during the game, each card is worth what it says, with a valet worth eight, a knight nine, and a king ten. However, for scoring at the end of the game, sevens are the most valuable, followed by sixes, aces, fives, fours, threes, twos, then all face cards. For scoring, these are called primes. To play the game, three cards are dealt to each player, then four cards are placed face up in the play area. If three kings appear, the cards are re-dealt. The player who did not deal the cards goes first. When it is your turn, you must play one card and one card only from your hand. Now, you have a two and there is a two in the play area. So you will play your two and take a trick. I discard a valet worth eight you cannot make a match, so you discard your three. I discard the two. Now, because you have a knight in your hand, which is worth nine, and there is a six and a three in the play area, six plus three equals nine, which means you have a match and you take a trick. I discard my ace, and because we are both out of cards, I deal us both three more cards. Ah! Ah, 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 what, You sir? have a seven in your hand. You also have an ace, which is worth one, a four, and a two in the play area, which add up to seven. 
But there is also a seven in the play area. So, which do you match with your seven? The three cards that add up to seven or the seven? The rules say when presented with such a choice, you must take the trick by collecting the single card. And so, you match your seven card with the seven card in the play area and take a trick. I make a match with the valet and take a trick. You have yet another seven in your hand. Now you match it with the ace, the four, and the two, and take a trick. And since you have taken the last card in the play area, you say Scopa and get a point. We continue to play by discarding and taking tricks until all 40 cards have been played. At that point, we count the points we have won by taking tricks and getting Scopas. The first person to get 11 or more points wins. If no one has 11 or more points, the deck is shuffled, the other person deals, and we play another round. Are you ready to play? Wow, that is super confusing. A long explanation. Let's do it. Scopa! You bet. <laughs> okay, so five. I'll take... The, the three and the two for a five. I'll take the eight and the eight. And he drops a five. One plus five equals six. I'm doing well. Yes, yes, yes. So I'll drop a four here. And he takes the four I dropped. Okay, I'll drop another four. Oh, and I can't do anything with a seven. I wanted to get that seven because it's the seven of coins. That's worth a point. So, um, can I get the seven? No. Um, I can get the, the five and the four here with a nine. Or I can try dropping the two and hope I get the seven with a nine. Let's do that. Hey, I took the seven. Uh, okay, I'll just take the five and four then. He drops a three. Six plus three is uh, nine. Oh, give me a three. Oh, a three would have been great. Then I could just go Scopa. Ah. Oh, no. And he took an eight. Darn. Oh, he took the ten, too. Uh, I'll drop the one. Okay, I'll drop the four. And I can at least get five here. Let's see, I'll take the, the two. I want to get that nine. So I'll drop this nine first and use the other nine. Did that that way just because the, the coins are more valuable. Cards. I took the last trick, so I get all the cards left on the table. You get one point for having the most tricks. Yay. You get one point for having the most coin cards. Woo. I get one point for having the seven of coins. Now, let's add up what each card is worth and see who got the highest number of primes. I have the most valuable tricks, so I get one point. Okay, so we're tied two to two. Okay, I'll take that match. And then Scopa. Three plus two is five. Scopa. Whoa, what's this? Six is six. Scopa. Woo! He put down a one. Scopa. Yes. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, I guess the Scopa streak had to come to an end. Darn. Darn. Oh, well. Let's see. I'm going to put down the 8 here. He might put down a 1 or something. Okay. I thought he might, so I could get 1 plus 4. Ooh, lots of coin cards on the table. Yeah, I knew he was going to take a match there. Um, I'll take this 3. 2 plus 5 equals 7. 
Scopa. Oh, I'm not scoping here. So that was a triple Scopa? Yes. Triple Scopa. And I've got the Seven of Primes. Nice. Okay. I'll put down my three. Oh, I picked it up with a seven, though. That's good. He, he, he didn't get the Seven of Coins. Seven of Coins. And he takes it now because he's a jerk. Okay, there's a 10. I'll take this five. Uh, nothing I can do with that four. You took the last trick, so you get all the cards left on the table. You get one point for having the most tricks. That was a you good round of for scopa. the most coin cards. I get one point for having the seven of coins. Now, let's add up what each card is worth and see who got the highest number of primes. I have the most valuable tricks, so I get one point. How is point. that even possible? Lastly, you had barely any cards. You had barely any cards, sir. I don't think you had valuable tricks at all. I think he's lying to me. Take this 10. Let's see, I'll take this nine. Ah, I took the one. Okay, I'll get rid of the seven there and then pick that seven back up. So let's see, uh, I have no way to pick up anything here. I'll drop the six. Oh, geez, he got a good match. The two, maybe? Yeah, that was a bad round for me. Rico's just cheating. He's a dirty cheater. Okay, so let's see. I've got a bunch of sixes. I'll do the six the coins. The highest number of primes is decided by the highest card of each suit you have. Interesting. I feel like I'm still confused and would need, like, a, a giant explanation for how that works. So let's see. Ten. Can I do four, five, and one? Okay. I'm going to drop this one here because maybe I can do something with the eight. I cannot. Oh, well. And seven is the highest of primes. Now I'm just confused. Okay, well, I, I, I'm winning. Scopa, oh, I got the seven of coins. I took the last trick, so yeah, I get see, all the cards see, I think he's cheating. I think he's cheating. No points for me. I get one point for having the most tricks. I get one point for having the most coin cards. I get one point for having the seven of so coins. He's got like a one now, and a let's four. Let's add up what each card is worth and see who got the highest number of points. One primes. is worth you 16, have the most and then four tricks. is worth 14 so you there. Get one point. Yeah, I'm not getting the number of tricks. Not getting that at all. Oh, hey, guess what? Seven of coins right off the bat for me. Take it. Taking it. So I'm. I'm. I, 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 I'm being here, uh, somebody is saying, the highest number of primes is literally the highest total of your... That doesn't make... What? I don't understand. He didn't explain it in his extremely long intro to this game, and so I'm just completely lost. So how can I get nine? Um, I can't get nine out of this. Value of the cards doesn't mean number on the cards. Well, that makes zero sense whatsoever. Thank you. Yes, thank you, though. No, no, no. Thanks, everybody, for trying to explain this to me. So I need to get all the sevens and all the sixes in order to win that game that he's doing at the very end? Sure. Okay, so I've got four. One and three is four. Steal all those sevens. Well, I'm trying to get all the sevens because I want to get that uh, seven of coins, right? 
Oh, come on. Ow. Oh. Okay. Well, I'll grab these sevens then. I was going to use my thing to get that ten. I'm very sad now. Hmm. Gosh, if I put down the one, I can get eight plus one is nine. But then he's probably going to do something like that where he steals the one as soon as I put it down. Two, three, four equals nine. You took the last trick. Woo! So you get all the cards left on the table. Well, five you is a prime number, but nobody's mentioning fives. I get one point for having the most tricks. What? I get one point for having the most coin cards. No. Now, let's add up what each card is worth and see who got the highest number of primes. You have the most valuable tricks, so you get one point. Okay, well, this is going to be the final round of Scopa, everyone. Final round. So let's let's bring our A game here. Because it, it's 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 a race to 11, right? It's a race to 11 points. I think that's how this works. So whoever gets 11 points first. And basically, one of us is guaranteed to get like 11 points here at the end. Yes. I'll take this 9. Thank you. Put down like a 3 so I can go scope... Uh... Hmm, let's see. I'll put down the five. Two plus five equals seven. So with my seven of coins. And then three plus one equals four. Yeah. Yeah. Got a lot of coin thingies on the board here. So let's see. I'll go with the six here. Take that coin thingy. Oh, no. Scopa. You scoped me. I'll get rid of my eight. No. Scopa! No! No! Oh. And I have nothing I can win with here. I, I like, I have nothing I can make matches with here. Wait, wait, wait. One plus seven, Scopa. Scopa! I put down my two and hope he can't do anything. Okay, another round, huh? Another round, okay. 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 9. Well, that doesn't work. 3 plus 4 is 7. Or should I do 2 plus 4 is 6? Let's do 2 plus... No, no, no. 7. 7, right? 3 plus 4. 6, 2 plus 4. Got it. Scopa. Scopa. Scopa did, everyone. You took the last trick, so you get all the cards left on the table. You get one point for having the most tricks. Yay! You get one point for having the most coin I cards. I just dominated you get that one round. Point for having the he only got coins. four cards. No points for you. Okay, no, now, he got let's way add more up than that. What each card is worth, and see who got the highest number of primes. You have the most valuable tricks, so you get one point. And lastly. We score the Scopas. It appears you have won, Samantha Quick. Yes! And because you beat me, we can finally talk business. I have a client who desires a Saddam Melek Sapphire. Have you heard of it? I'm not in the mood for a quiz, Signore Tatsa. Forgive me. The Saddam Melek is said to be the largest and most beautiful star sapphire in all of Europe. As you probably know, its current owner is a man named Vladimir Thanatos who keeps it at the Palazzo Zateri, guarded by one of the most sophisticated security systems ever devised. Even someone with your youthful energy and talent will find stealing it a challenge. Which is why I suggest you contact Gina as soon as possible. I understand Scopa just fine. I don't understand the part about primes, because he never explained how primes work in his explanation of the game. I feel like he should have explained that. Gina, good idea. The more time you give her, the more details on the system she will be able to give you. 
There, business is over. Back to pleasure. Do you have time for another game of Scopa? Huh? No. No, I'd better get going. Good luck, Samantha. As soon as you have the sapphire, bring it to me. Yes, Gina. So, Gina, you might remember Gina was on the computer at Fongos. So, we're going to Fongos. Vladimir Thanos. Yeah. How long did it take me to play that game of Scopa? I feel like that went very quickly. I had a couple of rounds, which I did very, very well and got more than, like, three points. So, that's not something which happens often. Let's see. And then this challenge is just kind of tough. Woo! Okay, so uh, we don't need to mess with this actually right now. Oh shoot, Fongo's on his way. Fongo, I was about to hack into your computer. Could you please be a little bit more considerate for us spies? Seventeen minute scope a game. That's not a very quick game, is it? No, no. Sounds good. Okay, we escaped without any problems whatsoever. Whew, that was good. Okay, so. Capitano. We're gonna play chess. Alright, so we need to play Zatera's name. So, KB1. Z. A. T. T. E. R. E. So I just sent her the message, Zatere, and she mentions their cycling bin at the Rialto Market next morning. I don't think I showed that to you. There's a book about chess. It's uh, in the same place where I got the sunglasses. And it talks about chess notation. So it, it assigns a letter to every single space on the board. And so I moved chess pieces to those spaces. That's how you solve that puzzle. Oddio, sto male. Mi sono stato beccato da un piccione. Dov'è un ospedale in Italia? Yes, Scopa is in fact a real game. You can buy it in real life. Yep, they did not make it for uh, Phantom of Venice. Hello, Nancy. I'll let you get back to work. Ciao. Let me see. I don't know if Margarita disappears here. No, she doesn't. Okay, Margarita's still here. So let's switch to the next day of the game by falling asleep. I wanted to fall asleep. Can I fall asleep, please? Oh no, I can't fall asleep. I'm going to get an angry message. Hello? Don't ever do that again. Do what again? Who is this? There's only one of me. I like it that way. It's going to stay that way. Samantha? Do what you have to do for Tatsa, but after that, the charade ends. Got that, sister? But who are you? Where are you? How did you know it was me? Good question. Too bad I'm not going to answer them. Just finish up and go back to River Heights, Nancy. Oh, and say hi to Nick for me. Who is she? People are uh, in the comments saying what the wiki says. The prime for each team is determined by selecting the team's best card in the four suits and totaling those four cards' point values. When calculating the prime, a separate point skill is used. Yeah, that, that is, does not make things easier. That just makes things more difficult. So the real Samantha Quick is now mad at Nancy. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh my goodness. <sighs> I think I'll grab a little shut-eye. Got that, sister? 
You're not gonna impersonate me again. And what happens that night? <gasps> the Phantom! My locket! <coughs> and then the Phantom just jumps off. Your locket's gone. I know. He took it. Phantom strikes again! And the police found nothing? No fingerprints or microfibers or DNA or TNT or whatever it is they're always rooting around for these days? They didn't find a thing, and they were here for hours. They're not even sure how he got in. This is highly disturbing, Nancy. I sent you over there to unmask this villain, not to be victimized by him. Believe me, Miss Rutherford, after what happened last night, I'm more determined than ever to catch this guy. Well, having that trinket torn from your neck seems to have brought out the pluck in you. Whereas having that figurine stolen from the Piano Nobile seems to have brought out the greed in Margarita. When I reminded her that her insurance company would reimburse her for its loss, she was downright giddy. Oh, good heavens, someone call the police! What's wrong? Are you alright? I mean the fashion police, dear. You should see what my assistant decided to wear today. Definitely not a minette originale. What in the world is on your head? Oh, please take it off, you're scaring Ginger. Thank heaven she came in the back door. If the neighbors saw, oh, the scandal. Enough tomfoolery. Off with you, Nancy. That rogue has stolen quite enough. I insist you find him forthwith. Toodaloo. Okay, so the thief has stolen my thing. Yes, the thief the thief is a very nasty person. <laughs> I like how the phantom is wearing a mask and Helena's wearing a different mask at the same time. It's like they're having some sort of mask party. Uh, a masquerade, if you will. And I wasn't invited. They didn't mask, I mean ask me to come. And now I'm dressing up like I'm dressing up in my cat suit. Why do you say that? It's not my fault that figurine was stolen. This could be interesting. It most certainly is. You left the door unlocked. I most certainly did not. You were the last one to leave last night. I always lock the door. It's part of my routine. You're just trying to blame someone else so you won't get fired. Oh, since you're not about to blame Nancy. Indeed I am not. You're glad her locket got stolen, aren't you? Don't be ridiculous. You're the one who's being ridiculous. Interesting Chinese puzzle box. Where'd you get it? Oops, there goes my pager. Yep, my pager. Okay, okay. Whew. I wonder if Colin's the culprit and he paid the Phantom to steal Nancy's locket just because he wants to break up Nancy and her boyfriend. Aha, aha, so now Margarita's gone, and when we spy over here, we get to see her. She's right here. Whoa, that's Margarita. What's she doing there? Margarita... I can't tell if she's practicing social distancing or not. Is she is she six feet away from Fongo? Well, now she's six feet away from Fongo. Oh, she's angry with him. Yeah, she is angry. And what's this? A scope of card. Can't believe it. It's a scope of card. Yes. So, uh, somebody here asked about two-year-olds and three-year-olds. I believe, uh, people call them the terrible twos, and then, uh, three-year-olds are three nagers. Betty bye, here I come. That's the joke name for, uh, both those things. Little kids sometimes uh, throw huge temper tantrums a lot because, well, you know, they're still young. They haven't learned how to regulate their emotions yet. So, Nancy fell asleep. I did that on purpose. So it's the next day, and now and now Margarita's back. Now we can talk to her. Because I want to talk to her about what she was doing with Fongo. No one's there. I must have just missed him. 
Yeah, Margarita, why were you at that dude's office? I see you have recovered from having that locket ripped from your neck. That is what happens when one leaves a door unlocked after one has been told not to. The police said it's very possible that the thief picked the lock. The police know nothing. What do you need from me? I saw you coming out of the Argon building. Do you have an office there? No, but I know someone who does. I wanted him to set up a wireless network here in the car. My friends, they all say it is something I must have. You saw me? That is strange. I did not see you. I was uh, in a shop across the street. I saw you through the window. So when will he set up the system? Never. He said he does not do that kind of work anymore. Which made me very angry because I found this flyer here in the car just last week. Look at it. Why would he print that and give it to people if he had no intention of doing what it says? It even came with a discount coupon. Ah, I do not like it when people waste my time. It does... I, I mean, I would be Where annoyed. Where did you find this? Where it belongs. In the waste basket. I was not emptying it. I just saw it from across the room. So it's all right if I keep this? Since altro. Like, I would be annoyed if I thought I was getting this cool discount and I got nothing. That is all you wanted to ask me? I understand why she's upset. How many people knew you owned the Etruscan figurine that the Phantom stole? Everyone who came to my parties. Hundreds of people. They like that figurine very much. It is a great loss. But the insurance company is going to pay me more than I thought it was worth. I will just have to buy something else my guests will like. I cannot believe hundreds of people come to parties at this place. I'm sorry. I found this card over there. Do you know anything about it? No, it must be trash. The wind blew up here from the street. I was thinking maybe the phantom dropped it. It was the wind, but think what you like. I'll talk to you later. Bella Roba. So we can follow up on that, uh, where is it? She just gave me that piece of paper. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we can follow up on the wireless network. What we need to do is print out that number on Fongo's fax machine. So let's do that. You can do this later on in the game. I'm doing it now. I have to do it now. I already started this puzzle, and this puzzle's sometimes terrible. Can't start this puzzle without finishing. Ooh, yes. Got it. Woo! So what was that number? It was zero one zero. It, it was a complicated number. Here it is. So let's pull it up. One 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 pound o four six. One 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 pound o four six. And this is going to be a complicated puzzle. So with this puzzle, what you want to do is play the musical notes. Which match up with the horse. Where is the horse? Here. So I have to play every single one of these musical notes. Mi, re, do, si, la, re. Re, do, la, fi, so, la, ti, do. So. If those are the notes, then we are pressing two, nine, one, pound, asterisk, nine, nine, one, asterisk, seven, oh, oh, one, two, one, one, oh, oh, two, six, Nine, 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 asterisk, pound, and nine, one. Welcome to the automated directory for Sony Trico. For personnel, press one. For store locations, press two. So for here you want to uh, navigate their uh, directory. 
For our headquarters, you want to press, press two one. twice. Our safe, and, our safe and secure store is located near the fountain in the Campo Santa Maria Formosa. I bet that's a safe room where they're keeping the stolen goods. Mm hmm. So that's the safe room where they're keeping the stolen goods. Hooray! So once we actually get the key for that area, we'll be able to get into that safe room. Can't do it quite yet. I'll show you what it looks like, though. The safe room. It's locked. Okay, Rialto Market here. We're gonna go there. Pasta fresca, pasta fresca di tutti i tipi, pasta a casa. La mia lavatrice si è rotta, Vania. So she left the instructions here along with that spy thing. Thank you, Gina. And now to the Kanaskosta. Uh, so it's another microdot. We're gonna have to use. Uh, we're, oh boy. Okay. I'm getting a little upset because I know what puzzles coming up next. Let's see. I try putting the microdot here. Uh oh, your microscope isn't working. I can't see anything. It was working fine a minute ago. How could you break it, Nancy? Something so vital to my work, so critical. How could you be so careless? Calm uh, I'm down. I'm sure it's just a burned out bulb. Oh. Well, I'll just have to find you another one. In the meantime, why don't you have a go at the mosaic? Use the tesserae from that bin and create a mosaic that looks just like that photograph. With any luck, by the time you finish that, I'll have found us another bulb. It's the mosaic puzzle, everyone. Okay, so I'm going to save my game here. And let's do it. We need to get all the mosaic tiles in place. Woo! Yep, we need to follow his photo reference. Just like Scopa, it's just a long, complicated puzzle. I guess this one's not complicated. It's just repeat the colors but it's still very long. This one's actually rather nice because the top three rows are simple, easy to get those done, white, red, and white, and then everything else is just multiple colors. Oh, that's not red, <laughs> whoops. Okay, let's see. One, two, and then one, and then... Oops. Missed that tile there. Okay. How could you break that, Nancy? How could you be so careless? Calm down, I'm pretty sure it's just a burnt out bulb. Oh, 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 okay. I'll just get a new one while you do all of my work for me. <laughs> yeah, oh. New theory, he broke the bulb on purpose. Just so he could force Nancy to do this puzzle. Because he really didn't want to do this job. Done. And several more. red I find it easier to do the the black and gray pieces first it's easier to tell them apart um, probably because there's only two colors I 
as opposed to the three different shades of uh, green. Okay. Oh, 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 Mr. Black over here in this corner. Well, no wonder Colin's been working here for so many days. It's, it's this puzzle. That's that's all he's been doing all day long. Good. Okay, that's done. Uh, let's see. This is dark green. This is dark green. Hard to tell. I don't think that's dark green, though. I guess another strategy is to just do one area at a time. So just do this left hand area, then do the middle, and then do the right hand area. Um, yeah, I feel like that would be a legitimate strategy too. I always feel sad when the background music dies during this puzzle. It's like the game is punishing me for being slow. I'm sorry I'm slow, but this is a long puzzle. Okay, got the left-hand side of this done. Do 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 do. No 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 no. And there goes the music. black piece there and we sort of have a um, bunch of red pieces here so this is where orange and red come into play orange 
orange, red, this is orange, red, orange, orange, and then one, two, three, blues, and then orange, red, red, orange, red, orange. I don't know what's here. Already last, lost track of my reds and oranges. Okay. So there's a red here. Let's just get the blues done, I suppose. Three blues and then a red. This is kind of hard. I think that's an orange. I could be wrong. The photo reference is hard to see. I think that's a pink. Yes. Done. Okay. One more. Last one. This puzzle discourages me from ever wanting to make a mosaic in real life. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's do the these pieces. It just makes me wonder how Colin got some of these pieces in place. Because we had a bunch of pieces to start with. I guess those were the Tesserae, which were in fantastic shape and didn't need replacing. Yes, 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 indeed. Good, okay. Left hand side looking almost done. Again, no music. Green here, green, green, and green there. Yeah, music disappeared again. Poor music. This one. You've done it. Good for you. While you were doing that, I replaced the bulb in the microscope, so you're all set. Woo! Okay, so he replaced the bulb in the microscope. This tells us how we break into the Zateri place and get that, uh, wait, get the sapphire. Hello, Nancy. That box, it wasn't there before, was it? No, in fact, I just won it in a card game. It's a Chinese puzzle box. Beautiful, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's fantastic. Why do they call it a puzzle box? Because to open it, you must solve a puzzle, something which so far I have been unable to do. It's very light, so even if I were able to open it, I doubt there'd be anything valuable inside. The bloke is a bit of a ne'er-do-well, so I'm not surprised. However, Margarita has taken a fancy to it and is thinking about buying it. That's why I haven't taken it home. Would it be okay if I tried to open that Chinese puzzle box? I'd love for you to have a go at it, but it seems a bit fragile, and until Margarita makes up her mind about buying it, 
I'd rather no one muck around with it. Sorry. I need to get going. Drop by again. Yep. Okay, so that is the puzzle box. What you're supposed to do is buy, buy a book, and that book will uh, give you the clues for solving the box puzzle. I'm not going to do that. I already know the solution to the puzzle. It's very simple. It's only got like four things on it, so it's not too tough to just press the pieces. So, according to the note that uh, we got, we jam this inside the gate, and we press the symbols in the order that was specified on the note. The one we just read. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. The note specifies that you do have to be wearing the cat suit in order to get inside because these are heat based robots. See these things? Those are security robots. And they operate based on human heat. So you need to wear the cat suit, which conceals your body heat. Yes, conveniently, the dancing cat suit is very good uh, for robbing people. No! Oh. So you can't get caught by those robots. If you do, it's it's an ending sequence. So just have to be very careful when you're wandering around spying. Come on, red thing, get out of the way there. Yes. Oh, come on, I almost made it. I almost made it. But if you get caught, it's just restart the puzzle. That's all. So it's not like you have to start the entire thing over from the beginning again. You, you just have to just restart the room. See, so Nancy can't be standing there. Oh, wow, really? So what if I run, like, the second that thing is there? Got it. Okay, so that's how you do it. This is somewhat annoying puzzle. You need to press all the levers in the correct order, and the order is randomized. One, uh, five. One... One, five, four. One, five, six. One, five, eight. One, five, eight, seven. How many are there? One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay, one, five, eight, two. One, five, eight, three. Seven. One, five, eight, three, two. One, five, eight, three, four. One, five, eight, three, six, two. One, five, eight, three, six, four, seven. Nope. One, five, eight, three, six, four, two, seven. Done. I have to do that for. Every single thing, every single one. So there's one in each corner of this area. That was the top right corner. Let's go to the bottom uh, right corner. As you can kind of see, the uh, robots move at different speeds. So green ones move slowly, and then the blue ones move faster. Okay, that that wasn't very bad. Two, one, three. Two, one, four, three. Two, one, four, five. Two, one, four, six. Two, one, four, seven. Eight. 
two, one, four, seven, six. Two, one, four, seven, three. Two, one, four, seven, five, three. Okay. Two, one, four. Sorry, two, one, four, seven, five, three, eight, one. Let's see. Here, I'll try to sneak around, try to get to the left hand side quickly. I've got this red one in the way, so I'm going to hang around here and hope the red one doesn't go down. It does not. So I'm hiding in this little corner. Wait for the red one to go out of the way so I can go left. Ah, I was going to get caught there. Okay. No way to avoid that, I suppose. Oh, man. Barely avoided blue. This one looks difficult. Uh, got it. Woo! Okay. Two. Three. Two, one. Three. Two, one. Uh, didn't I have this earlier? Two, one, five. Three. Two, one, five, four. Nope. Two, one, five, six. Two, one, five, seven, eight. Two, one, five, seven, six. Two, one, five, seven, three. Two, one, five, seven, four, three. Two, one, five, seven, four, six, eight. Woo! Yay! Oh, and escaping here is going to be a nightmare. I've got three things attacking me all at the same time. Okay, blue one goes up. Um, I didn't go up quickly enough. Uh, okay, going past blue there. up here looks like it could be difficult because I've got the red in the way okay missed the red and then this is just kind of a terrible one this I have to go I've got three of them I have to dodge all three of them blue's gonna go up in the area where I want to go And then blue goes around. Oh, it looks like blue goes back around. Okay. So I guess I'll have to go all the way to the left to avoid blue when blue goes up. Ah! It noticed me when I did nothing. I was just standing in place. Huh. Let me try this. Again, I'm standing in place. Good, didn't get caught that time. There's a little bit of randomness to the puzzle with, with, with things like that, where it's like, oh, I was just standing in place. Sorry, you got caught anyway. Uh-oh. Almost got caught by red, almost got caught by red again. Oh, well, there's no good hiding spot there. And I don't think running up is gonna, oh. Running up was good. So here, let me escape to the right and then back in again. Good. Okay, last one. Seven, eight. Seven, six, seven, five, six, seven, five, eight. 
Seven, five, four. Seven, five, three. Seven, five, two. Seven, five, one, two. Wow, seven, five, one, two, three. Four. Okay, seven, five. One, two, three, four, eight. And then six. That was kind of an easy one. I got four in a row. I'm surprised it gave me four in a row. That That is not something that usually happens, I think. Ah, okay. And here I want to escape. Let's see if I can escape to that bottom right corner in time. Bottom left corner, I mean. I'm trying to avoid those robots. So I go right, I go down, and then here I want to go in to grab that diamond, because I've turned off all the power to the diamond. Yeah, that messed up there. Uh, let's see. Perhaps with this one it's easier just to be in the far left. Just attack this room from the left, maybe. So let's see, I'll try that. Go in the room from the left and then uh, escape. Oh, come on! I was two seconds away. I like the diamond. I think it's kind of cute. Although we're stealing a sapphire, not a diamond, Nancy. Ooh, 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 almost getting caught by these robots. Managed to escape just in time. Ow. Yep, okay, so coming in from the, the left is the easy way to do it. And here's our sapphire. We got it. We got the sapphire. So we stole the sapphire. Now we're gonna escape like this. Just leaving the room and entering again to save my position in case I get caught, which is always a possibility. Oh, and I got caught by a green one. Okay. Robot Velociraptors? Oh no, I wouldn't want to face those. Robot Dinosaurs? Uh-uh. Done. Okay, solve the puzzle. We've got the Sapphire, now we give it to Enrico Taza. And yeah, surprisingly close to the end of the game, I think. Oh no, we still got a little bit left. Oh, do I need to change back into Samantha Quick's outfit? I see from the way you are dressed, you are American. Who are you? Uh, my name is Nancy Drew. This is a private the club. You cannot come in. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I see from the way you're dressed, you're American. I'm dressed in a cat suit. Do Americans usually dress in cat suits? I feel like Americans do not usually dress like that. Changing clothes here. Gotta go back to Samantha quick. White gloves, dress, just wear uh, those shoes. Where's my wig? Here. 
Excellent. Doesn't recognize Nancy's voice either. Yeah. Yeah, so so far in this game we've learned uh, that uh, the people in, in Venice think Americans like cheap cafes and they dress in cat suits all day long. You have the sapphire? Nope. You do. Excellent work, Samantha Quick. I will... Excuse me. Pronto? Oh man, he's gonna discuss top secret spy information right in front of me. You know the rules, Nico. I cannot tell you what your next target is. You keep a list in that Chinese puzzle box, no? When you shake it, that compartment opens up. Nico, no, how could you have lost it? Never mind. Go to the Capitano and get him to tell you. And when you go after the target, do not wear that costume. You are trying Il Dottori's patience. Okay, ciao. Where were we? Ah, your fee. Unfortunately, that is business, which means we cannot discuss it until you have once again beaten me in a game of Scopa. Scopa. Takes forever to. You to have shuffle. changed your mind about playing Scopa. Let's see. Um. Yeah. No. We can ask him for help, but we can't ask him about those prime things. I really don't want to play cards right now. Then our conversation is over. And we don't have to play the second game of Scopa. No, we Where do not. We do not. Okay, so we overheard the phone call about the Chinese puzzle box. The one that Colin has. I love how multiple people in the chat are screaming, Scopa! 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 Uh -huh. And I'm like, nope! Uh, nope, I'm not playing that game. Colin? Okay, Colin's gone, so we're gonna break into his Chinese puzzle box. You shake it, and we want to make these symbols, or something like that. Uh, the symbols we want to press, uh, it's going to be wood, mountain, fire, and water. And the culprits are using this. So that's the culprit's code for uh, where they attack. Take a closer look at this. So each scope of card represents a different thing to do. Like Saint Gervais, Cavarano, Canascosta. That was the one that was left at the Canascosta when it was robbed, obviously. So, we're going to take a look at Fongo's office. We're taking a look at his cards. And uh, that card should tell us where the Phantom will strike next. Hmm. Let's see. Almost got the pieces right. Oh no, of course that moves like the last two. Got it. Okay, so he kept the cards in here. Right here. Now the Ray de Denari is missing. According to the list I found in that puzzle box, the Ray de Denari is code for the Palazzo Orpello. I'll bet that's the next place they're going to hit. The Palazzo Orpello. Nancy, what has happened? Long story short, I think I know where the Phantom is going to strike next. Where? Tell me. I'm pretty sure he's going to steal something from the Palazzo Orpello. You are pretty sure? I'm really sure, as in almost positive. And I know his name is Nico. That's what Tatsa called him anyway. Nico He's a thief we are very familiar with. He's not very smart, which is why we did not think he could be the Phantom. But if he is taking orders from someone, that is different. Here is the plan. I will call the GDIF and have them send us some agents to stake out the Palazzo Orpello. You must be there too. I must? I mean, okay, sure. But first, you need to do two things. 
You must give everyone at the Karnas Costa the objects which will allow us to track them. Already did that. Although I think Colin may have left town with his. We will worry about Colin later. Second, you must brush up on your Italian, so that during the stakeout you can understand what the agents are saying over the radios. I can do that. Good. When you feel you are ready, call me, and we will move forward. You got it. Ciao! Excellent, excellent, excellent. So then let's go over here. What you need to do is read the Italian in Nancy's bedroom. It's right here. This Italian. So what you do is go over here, and it's common Italian's terms and phrases. So Fiori, Porta, all sorts of those things. Okay, so I'm not saving this as a mosaic puzzle, but I'm going to save this as uh, the Enrico puzzle, because hey, why not? So let's call. I know my Italian. What the? Hey, 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 that... I guess I need to read the entire Italian book. There. Hello, Nancy. All yes. the tracking devices have been planted, and you have brushed up on your Italian. See. Si. Good. The stakeout will take place at midnight tonight. You and the GBIF agents will allow Nico to enter the Palazzo Opello, then capture him when he tries to get away with whatever he has stolen. And so, I ask you, Nancy. Are you sure you are ready to go on the stakeout? Actually, I think I should go study Italian some more. Good. When you feel you are ready, call me. Ciao. So there's a note on Nancy's bed. I forgot. Justin left a note. Dear Nancy, recent unforeseen events have compelled me to leave Venice rather abruptly. I feel these events coupled with my hasty departure will cause you much, sir. Sorry. Very fancy letter. Okay. So I'm reading up the Italian one more time. And now we'll do that puzzle. Hello, Nancy. You have brushed up on your Italian? Yep. And so, I ask you, Nancy. Are you sure you are ready to go on the stakeout? I am ready. Then good luck. We will talk again after Nico is captured. Nancy, the four of us agents will be hiding in the courtyard waiting for Nico. We will call over the radio to tell you where we are and pick out from time to time. If you see Nico, let us know where he is and we will try to catch him. But don't give away our hiding places. So I'm by the white flowers. That spy is there. I'm by the fountain. That spy is there. So they're all gonna peek out, and I need to find the person who is not one of the agents. So statue, red flowers. The parete is this thingy. The car. So is there anything that's not one of those those four? Ah, oh, the blue umbrella. Oh, wasn't able to click on the uh, villain in time. So blue umbrella. The parete. The fountain. And the gondolas is like right there. I didn't see anything there. Red flowers. The kitty cat. Gondolas there. Anything here, and then basically anything down at the bottom. He's to the left of the white flowers. Got it. Woo! Fountain. 
Okay, those three, and then the fountain. Okay, so anything else? He's next to the gondolas. Got it. Statue. And cat. Red umbrella, wow. Everything's everywhere, and then the gondolas. So nothing in the middle, and those two far ends. Fountain. He's behind the fountain. Both these red things. And the cats. It's blue, and then anything downstairs. I oh, didn't see anything there. Alvaro's tree. Blue umbrella. Red flowers and statue. What? I didn't see anything different. Tree, car, gondolas. And statues. So I guess everything here in the middle. So if there's anybody that shows up on the top. There, cat. He's behind the cat. Ah! Statua. Statue. Cow. No, car. Red flowers. Gondolas, okay. Basically in here. Cat. He's behind the cat. Got him. Woo! Phantom arrested. Nico hasn't admitted anything? He does not admit that he is the Phantom. He does not even admit that he is Nico Petit. The police and the GDAF have been questioning him all night, but have gotten nowhere. Oh, so no. So we still don't know who Il Dottore is. And we do not know where any of the stolen artwork is. This is not good, Nancy. Now that Nico has been arrested, the theft ring may break up, and we may never recover the stolen goods. Prudence is not going to like that. Was he carrying anything that might help us? A wallet? An address book? I am looking at the arrest report. Among the items that were taken from him were a silver trumpet that he had just stolen from the Palazzo Opello, some coins, some matches, a used tissue, a receipt for Papano, I should say propane gas. On the back of this receipt were some numbers, 3447. Well, guess I'll just have to keep snooping around. Let me know if I can help. Ciao. Pretty simple to solve this puzzle. Where have we seen the propane before? It was, it was by the, uh, the House of Games. So 3447. Good, we caught Nico. Yes, that villain has been caught. Three, four, four, and then seven. Un texano che sa tutti e riesce a trovare tutto. Vedete che troverà il fantasma, sicuramente. And then we'll uh, go to the... What was it? The Campo Santa Maria Formosa? Right here. They use the key to get inside their safe house for another puzzle, which is kind of torturous. I'll bet this is a safe and secure store that was mentioned on that fax machine. So what we need to do is <laughs> use this map uh, in order to get through this area. So I've got all my instructions here. So go right, forward, left, spin wheel, left. So right, forward, right, spin wheel, right. When you empty one thing, it loads up another one. That's how that puzzle works. Left, forward, down. You turn forward, forward, right, spin wheel right. Left, and then forward twice. One, two. 
Then you turn right and spin wheel right. Left, forward, and then left. Spin wheel to the left. Right, forward, right, spin wheel to the right. Left, forward, down. U turn, forward twice, and then right. Spin wheel right. I hope I didn't lose where I was. Um, yeah. Left, forward, left and then spin wheel right so I'm gonna go left and I'm gonna go forward three times one two three and we go up Then you turn forward, left, spin left. I feel like this puzzle would be way easier if it was done like, you know, as a toy or something like that, as opposed to you having to take steps every single time in between, and, and you literally have to know where you are in the maze at all times, kind of. Because I don't, I don't know where I am in the maze right now. Uh, I guess you could kind of figure it out based on the, the things you're filling but I mean even if there was like an interactive map which showed where you are in the maze uh, similar to the one that we had in uh, Curse of Blackmore Manor that would make this puzzle more tolerable that would make it actually way better and then I would probably be able to solve it but instead you're just supposed to just remember where you are at every time in order to have this puzzle solved that's basically the only way to solve that puzzle Here we go. This is going to be the opening cutscene. Remember, it was Nancy walking through the sewers. Well, here it is. Now, the first microdot we saw said the code is 43556. Five, That's the first microdot we saw. Killian. Where have I seen that name before? Hildegard the Killian. address on this crate is the same address that was on that letter Helena dropped. And guess what? Helena is the culprit. So she was sending all the stolen items to Killian. Hildegard Let Killian. Get out of here! Hey! Open the door! So this puzzle, number two, right twice. Number one, left five times. One, two, three, four, five. Move three, right three times. One, two, three, four, right four times. One, two, three, four. And then move five left uh, five times until it's even with the others. Basically, you're getting all the water levels to be level with that puzzle, and it's a time challenge. If you don't solve it in time, it's it's very sad for you. Can I see that message again? No? all. Oh. Well, I wanted to U-turn and show you what that message looks like in English. Oh, well. Nancy, I was starting to be worried about you. It's Helena, Helena Berg. She's Il Dottore. You are sure? Yes, and I think she knows she's been busted. So you have to activate the tracking device I planted on her and find her before she escapes. I will activate her device immediately. But because of Carnivale, there are no officers available to follow her. You will have to do this, Nancy. You want me to track her? After I have activated the tracking device, your PDA will show a picture of what method of transportation she has taken. Whether she's traveling on foot, in a gondola, or by Vaporetto. From time to time, it will also announce where she is. Why can't it announce where she is all the time? The 
Transmission of a continuous signal would make the device too easy to detect. So please, Nancy, watch your PDA. It will tell you Helena's method of transportation and her last location. Use this information to figure out where she is headed so you can go to that place and intercept her. But you must move quickly or she will get away. I will send someone to help you as soon as possible. Okay. This prudence... It is very convenient that Helena just happened to take her pen with her as she was escaping from Venice. Yes! Yes, so now we can capture her. Rutherford, I did not like that she forced you on us. But when you are on a case, you are like a dog with a bone. I like that, Nancy Drew. There, Helena's tracking device is activated. She is all yours. Hurry! Hurry, Nancy, hurry. You've got to do this. Okay. Okay, she's in San Zacarita, and she, she, she went on the Vaporetto, so she must be in Plaza San Marco or somewhere. Oh, she took another car. Oh, and now she's walking. Uh, aha! She's right there. She traveled in a gondola. Um, here? No, she went down there. Academia. Got her. Academia. Gotcha. Woo! Helena. Don't try to hide from me, Helena. Nancy, what are you doing here? Getting my locket back. What are you? A cop? A government agent? A thief? What? What do you want? I'm just an amateur detective who wants what all decent people want. Justice. I had a feeling you were up to something. Your sudden arrival at Nascosta. Your feigned interest in Venice always asking questions. You've been watching Fango from the Altena all this time, haven't you? And now the little spy wants her locket back. Well, good. Because you're not getting it back. Ever. Helena, stop! She's getting away! Don't be too pleased with yourself, Nancy Drew. It's not over between us. Not by a long shot. True to her word, Helena didn't go quietly. After she was arrested, she insisted that because of me, a silly American teenager, a terrible mistake had been made. She claimed that not only was she innocent, but the locket around her neck was hers. Wow. But after I showed the authorities everything I discovered, it became clear that all the thefts attributed to the Phantom of Venice were actually perpetrated by a gang, her gang. It started with Hildegard Killian, a wealthy pork belly heiress in Chicago, who gave Helena a list of the Venetian art objects for which she would happily pay a small fortune should Helena somehow obtain them for her. Inspired by what she had learned while covering the trial of criminal mastermind Leo Macchiano, Helena subtly pumped her sources in the police department for the names of known or suspected criminals who could serve her purposes, which enabled her to put together her very own theft ring made up of Antonio Fango, codename Il Capitano. Using everything from trained pigeons to chess notations to chocolates, he made sure everyone in the ring knew what they needed to know by the time they needed to know it. Gina Scaramuccia, a civil engineer familiar with practically every security system in existence, she determined the best way to steal an item and, via Il Capitano, passed this information along to Nico Petit, Brigella, who did the actual stealing. It was his idea to wear the mask and cape while pulling the heists, something of which Helena, il dottore, did not approve. He delivered what he stole to Enrico Tazza, Alakino. He hid the items in paper mache carnival costume heads and stashed them away until they could be shipped to Hildegard Killian. But thanks to Sophia and me, they're all on their way to prison. Prudence Rutherford was so delighted that all the stolen objects were recovered undamaged that she's decided to include me in her memoirs, which I guess I'm supposed to consider a great honor. Margarita is delighted too. Everyone thinks that because I was staying at Ca Nascosta, she was somehow instrumental in solving the case. She's suddenly the darling of Venetian high society, which for her is a dream come true. As for Colin, he called me once out of the blue. He had read about the Phantom's capture and had just one question. Did I get my locket back? 
When I said I had and was wearing it, there was a long silence, then he just hung up. For a while, I felt bad. Then I remembered all those slides. So many tesserae. The end. Yay. So the dog was Ginger. Okay, so we got Klogyo, the Easter egg, the sausage sleuth, perfect mosaic, and the trivia question. Hooray, we're fantastic. So here's the next game Castle of the series. Castle has stood empty for almost a century in a remote corner of Ireland. The few who have dared to walk among its crumbling walls have told tales of devious fairies, ghostly lights, and a cursed spirit haunting the ruins. When an old friend of mine insists on holding her wedding there, Things quickly go from merry to menacing, and I soon find myself probing the darkest corners of the castle, struggling to unearth its secrets. Secrets which may have already cost the groom his life. Join me as I make my way through this long-forgotten fortress in... The Haunting of Castle Malloy. So that's the end of the game. Yeah, an interesting ending. I, I like the confrontation with Helena. It it's like a really intense confrontation with the culprit. As opposed to just Nancy going, Oh, you're the culprit! Oh, okay, cool. Oh man, Helena pretending that locket was hers. That was mean. Helena promised she would return to get revenge! I'm not sure she does return to get revenge. That would be cool if she did. Although it would totally be a spoiler for this game, right? It would spoil who the culprit is of the game, right? If, if people played uh, their, her uh, revenge game first. I know a lot of people say, oh, wouldn't it be so cool if we had a game where all the culprits came back? Well, at this point, there's like 20, 20 30 culprits. There's a ton of culprits. I, I'm not sure we could have a game with like 30 different characters. That'd probably be a little bit intense. Then you'd have to wonder who would who would they pick as the person to uh... Yeah, I don't know how they would pick which culprits should return and which culprits should be gone forever. I don't know. Samantha Quick, voiced by who? We don't know. Dance choreography. Woo! They had a choreographer, really? That's that's great stuff. There's some culprits, yeah, like Blackamoor Manor. I don't think that culprit is evil. And, and Haunting a Castle Malloy, I don't really have any harsh feelings towards that culprit. But this culprit, Helena, she stole my necklace! Yeah, she is very, very mean. Here are the bloopers, by the way. Phantom of Venice, Pump Puzzle, take three. Speed. Action. <laughs> Not funny, guys. It almost fell on my toe. Phantom of Venice, pigeon flyby, take eight. Speed. Action. <laughs> Talk about hitting your mark. You okay? Uh, uh, I'm okay. Phantom of Venice, B puzzle, take eight. I did not do the bee puzzle of this game. Oh well. Hey, Nancy. Howdy. Hi, Bernie. Come here, Pidgey, Pidgey, Pidgey. Come on. Come here, you stupid little. Whoa! I'm okay. It came with 
without warning, seeking a statue and revenge. A very scary movie. Attack of the Pigeon. Okay, so that's officially the end of Nancy Drew number 18, Phantom of Venice. I hope you enjoyed my uh, video video walkthrough here during the uh, quarantine. So game number 20 is the game where they have a repeat villain. So that's the only game where they have a repeat villain. It's coming up sometime soon.